Hi, welcome to this session uh, from Narayana Health on the occasion of World Kidney Day. My name is Dr. Abhijit. I am a resident from the Department of Nephrology here in Narayana Health. And I am here interviewing Dr. Krishna Kishore, who is the consultant in the Department of Nephrology. And we will be answering a few frequently asked questions regarding kidney disease. Welcome, sir. Namaste, everyone. I am Dr. Krishna Kishore, consultant nephrologist at Narayana Health. Thank you for the introduction, Dr. Abhi. So, uh, to start off, there is a myth that whenever a patient is asked to be started on dialysis, they always ask the question whether this dialysis is going to be continued for life. Is it always true that once you start dialysis, it has to be continued for life? No, that is not true. We can say that anybody who has been started on dialysis may not require that forever. So, to answer that question in a perspective, I would say that kidney disease are divided into two, two types. One is called acute kidney disease or a potentially reversible one. The other one is a chronic kidney disease, which is not potentially reversible. So the people who are getting dialysis for acute kidney injury, there is a chance that they may come off dialysis once the cause of acute kidney injury is treated. What exactly is this acute kidney injury, sir? So acute kidney injury is a condition where somebody gets kidney disease suddenly because of a certain clinical condition. One of the most common cause of acute kidney injury would be infections. And in the present clinical scenario, we can say that a dengue virus infection, a snake bite envenomation, a malarial fever, all these conditions can cause acute kidney injury. Somebody having acute kidney injury and on top of that a severe kidney failure and they would require a dialysis. And how do we say somebody is having severe kidney failure? It depends on what are the symptoms they would have. We measure a certain component called creatinine and based on the creatinine level and based on the clinical symptoms we decide on who will require dialysis. What exactly do they present with sir? What exactly do the patients with acute kidney injury have as symptoms? Yes, the symptoms vary with the severity of the kidney disease. So we say that the people with severe kidney failure have a certain set of symptoms. Most importantly, the amount of urine that they pass will come down. So we say that they have oliguria. That's a clinical word for that. And number two, because they pass less amount of urine, they get lots and lots of swelling in the body. The swelling first appears in the leg and is spread to all over the body. And they'll have difficulty in breathing, what we call dyspnea. So these are the common clinical, clinical symptoms that they would have, which makes us decide whether somebody would require dialysis or not. And how do we treat these patients who have acute kidney injury? So do all patients require dialysis? Yes. As I said earlier, the, the, the severity of the symptoms will decide whether somebody would require dialysis or not. For example, we can classify the acute kidney injury as mild, moderate and severe, let's suppose. So the people with mild and moderate variety may not require dialysis. The people in the severe category would require dialysis. And what determines the severity? Again, these are the range of the clinical symptoms and the biochemical parameters or otherwise called lab parameters. And one of the most important clinical symptoms that would decide that somebody would require dialysis or not is the amount of urine that they are passing and the breathing difficulty that they have because of volume overload. Volume overload means the volume of water that is accumulated in, inside the body because the kidneys are unable to let them out. So that is when we decide somebody will require dialysis or not. And during dialysis, we try to remove this extra water that is accumulated inside the body. And when they are better, when the urine output improves and we can take them off dialysis. So what is chronic kidney disease then, sir? Okay, as I said earlier, the chronic kidney disease again is a potentially irreversible form. So, as I said before, there are certain causes for acute kidney diseases, which are commonly infections or poisoning or, or a snake bite envenomation or some bee stings, etc. Whereas in a chronic kidney disease, most often these are metabolic diseases. One of the common conditions that can cause diabetic, uh, that can cause chronic kidney diseases, diabetic kidney disease, followed by hypertension. So, these are the two common causes I would say would cause chronic kidney disease. Apart from that, we have less common causes like cystic kidney diseases or uh, CKD, you have undetermined etiology. So, and there are some, some conditions like a, uh, we could say uh, a kidney stone disease, which can eventually result in chronic kidney disease. So, these are some of the less common causes. And the two most common causes, if you have to say, these are diabetes and hypertension. So, the various stages of uh, chronic kidney disease and how, how is that relevant to a patient? Yeah. So, uh, somebody having a chronic kidney disease. So, do everybody with chronic kidney disease require dialysis or do everybody with chronic kidney disease have severe kidney failure? No. So, to categorize them, so we have a certain classification where we classify them into five stages. The chronic kidney disease is classified into five stages starting from stage one to stage five. The people who have mild disease, so we can say that we can, let's suppose we put the kidney function in terms of percentage and say that 100% is normal. 
So the percentage of this one will help us in determine which stage of chronic kidney disease they are in. So anybody who is having say less than 90% we call in stage 1 and, and between 60 to 90 we call it stage 2, 30 to 60 we call it stage 3, 15 to 30 we call it stage 4 and less than 15 we call it stage 5. And for the sake of simplification I put it as percentage but, but clinically we call this what we call GFR that is glomerular filtration rate. The people with certain GFR, certain level of GFR will be classified into a certain stage based on the, uh, based on the numbers which I mentioned earlier. So you mentioned that the most important causes of chronic kidney disease is diabetes and hypertension. So how important is it that we have to control the sugars and the blood pressure in order to retard the progression of the chronic kidney disease? Yeah. So as uh, diabetes and hypertension are the two important causes of chronic kidney disease, I would say. So diabetes, India is called the diabetic capital of the world. So we do have lots and lots of people with diabetes than any, any other country in the world. And to add to that, our diabetes is the most common cause of kidney disease. So diabetes initially may not have any symptoms when it causes kidney disease. The onset of symptoms will appear once they have a lot of protein passing in the urine. So that will be the first stage of it. So once they cross the stage, that is when we see that they have the creatinine going up, which says that they are entering into the stage of kidney failure. So there is a proteinuria followed by the onset of kidney failure. So once we control the diabetes in that stage, once we say that we can control the amount of leakage of protein that they have, then we can have a say in retarding the progression of the kidney disease. So in one way, control the diabetes much earlier rather than controlling the diabetes once the onset of kidney disease has happened. So it is proven all over the world in various studies there. So once we control the diabetes early, then we can retard the progression of the kidney disease. And the same way goes with hypertension. So most common, these, they go together, the diabetes and hypertension. The people will have, who have diabetes, then more or less in, in five years or so, they're going to get hypertension. So among these two diseases, if somebody has both, diabetes and hypertension, it is very important they control hypertension much better and also diabetes. So control of these two diseases will delay the progression of the kidney disease. In some people, if it, it, if it can be controlled early, there can also be a reversal of the kidney disease if it is in the very early stages. So most of these patients with chronic kidney disease do present with fatigue and shortness of breath. What exactly is the cause for these symptoms, sir? Yeah. So the fatigue and breathlessness, most of the time, uh, we say fatigue, lethargy, weakness, and they have difficulty in walking, the breathing difficulty while walking. So these are the symptoms which usually start and gradually progress. Initially, most of them ignore these symptoms, but these symptoms, when they become severe, that is when they present. And most commonly, this is the stage where they have very severe kidney disease, and it becomes very difficult to reduce the degree of severity of the kidney disease. So uncontrolled diabetes can cause this lethargy and weakness and uncontrolled hypertension can cause this and diabetes and blood pressure together causing a heart disease can cause this and severity of the kidney disease can cause these symptoms. And more specifically in people with severe kidney disease, they have reduced production of blood because kidney is very important to produce a certain hormone which can improve the blood in the body. So when this hormone is reduced, then the hemoglobin is reduces and it can lead to this lethargy, weakness and easy fatigability. So you said that chronic kidney disease is irreversible. And so if a patient does reach the stage five of chronic kidney disease, so what are the treatment options available for that patient? Yeah. So it's always better that we that we progress and monitor the patients with chronic kidney disease. So we need to determine which stage they are in and institute appropriate treatment. So once they reach the CKD stage 5 or chronic kidney disease stage 5, we say that the percentage of the kidney function put together of both the kidneys is less than 15%. So which means that the kidneys alone by themselves cannot function very efficiently for our daily activities. So in that case, we need some help. In people who are very symptomatic, like who have reduced urine output, have a lot of swelling, have breathing difficulty, have reduced appetite, and these people need initiation on dialysis. So these treatments forms are called renal replacement therapy. So in renal replacement therapy or kidney replacement therapy, we have two forms. Either it's a dialysis or number two, it's a kidney transplantation. So of these two modalities, the best one is kidney transplantation and if somebody cannot go for that then we go for dialysis and which patient needs to be started on which modality of therapy will be determined based on the clinical symptoms, their age, their comorbid conditions, their various other organ functions. So that can be determined as a whole and we cannot say that X or Y 
is, is eligible only for a certain transplant or dialysis. What exactly does dialysis entail sir, for the patient? Dialysis is a, a procedure where uh, the functions of the kidney, not the whole function of the kidney, a part function of the kidney can be performed using a machine. So in dialysis, what happens in, in very uh, easy terms or lay terms, how can we put it as we can say that dialysis is going to cleanse the blood. So in dialysis, we have multiple tubes there where the blood is taken out of the body by having an access either in the neck by using a catheter or in the hand by a fistula and the blood is taken out of the body. It goes into the filter where the blood is cleansed and then it is sent back into the body. So it is a procedure. We call it extracorporeal means we are taking the blood out of the body and cleansing it through the through the dialyzer and then we are sending it back into the blood in, into the body. So this is a temporary procedure as you can imagine. So we are doing it for a certain amount of time and then cleansing the blood and sending him back. So which means that after some time, if the kidneys doesn't function, again the waste accumulate, we have to repeat this dialysis procedure again and again, at least three times in a week in people who have irreversible kidney disease. Thank you so much sir for shedding light on uh, various forms of renal failure and how exactly to treat it. Thank you. Ben.